Delegate Price. Good afternoon. Hello. Mr. Chairman and other commissioners, I am currently in the second week of a youth camp I'm hosting in my district. When I first saw as an inconvenience today, because I thought we would have had these discussions in July, I have come to see as a learning opportunity for the amazing students I'm working with in Newport News who visited the Capitol today and who have left uh, some statements that I will turn in for them. They've described how gun violence impacts their lives. I am here representing these young constituents and others in my district that experience what some have dubbed everyday gun violence. I have been listening intently today and yesterday, and I've heard a few things that stuck with me. I have heard a few times that our Second Amendment is very beloved, and I hope to see some of these same faces when other parts of our Constitution are actually being attacked. And further, a gun lobby spokesperson stated, and I'm paraphrasing, that we can't let emotion drive our policy-making decisions, and we need to be reasonable in how we go about passing bills. In addition to being completely impossible to being devoid of emotion mm. as compassionate humans are supposed to be, it's offensive to think that emotions would not play a role when we are talking about the lives of Virginians being gunned down in certain parts of our state. I'm being presumptuous, but commissioners, I'm betting that not many of you on this commission live in fear of gang and gun violence in your zip code. I'm pretty sure that not many of you are afraid to go out on your porch, take your kids to a playground, or go on certain streets for fear of being shot and killed. And not many of you live in the contradiction of being both paralyzed with fear of gunshots when you hear an argument break out and also desensitized to the sound of gunshots far off in the distance. Or of many of you being awakened at night by gunfire or deciding which way you're going to drive home based on what you see about the shootings that have happened on Twitter. And I dare say that probably not many of you have attended so many prayer vigils and community walks and funerals of those in your community that have died by gun violence, often wondering while you're sitting there in the seats about the potential and the dreams of the teenager that was gunned down in the street. What I have described is just part of what my constituents and I experience on a daily basis. We experience daily trauma that compounds with each shooting, simultaneously bu building fear of and also normalizing shootings in our area. I am here valuing the very real emotions that my constituents feel, valuing a sense of urgency for us to act legislatively, and also valuing qualitative and quantitative data. I think it is reasonable for us to act to save lives of Virginians. What I haven't heard enough of is how the constitutional right to bear arms is not always equally upheld for all of our United States residents when only certain good guys with guns get to live to tell about it. Rest in peace, E.J. Bradford Jr. We also aren't talking about how we need to assess the perfection of our union, establishment of justice, ensuring of domestic tranquility and promotion of our general welfare when so many are dying by guns. Here are some facts. This year, between the Memorial Day weekend and June 4th, it was reported that at least 55 people had been shot in Hampton Roads. When we arrived for special session on July 9th at that time, there had been 32 shootings and eight homicides by firearm in Newport News. As of yesterday, there have been 46 shootings and 15 homicides by gun in Newport News. I come before you if I came before you speaking about a virus or a toy that was killing at that rate, we would have been had a study. We would have been taken swift action and we would see it as the crisis and epidemic it is. So why not with gun deaths? I know that legislation alone is not going to end gun violence, but we must each play our role and my role is re legislator. So as part of a package of bills, I have introduced House Bill 4005, which would allow local governments to regulate firearms, which is currently prohibited in our code. The ordinances would be subject to our constitutions, federal law and state law, but would allow for local leaders who know their gun violence in their communities to prevent it and keep their residents safe. 
The geographic diversity of our commonwealth is one of our strengths, but it also comes with a diversity of experience in gun violence. The language of House Bill 4005 is permissive and not mandatory and would allow localities like Newport News, Falls Church, Fairfax County, Alexandria, Fredericksburg, Norfolk, Roanoke, Charlottesville, Albemarle County, and Richmond to move forward with the ordinances that they seek for their residents. One person's individual right to carry does not outweigh a community of individuals' right to protect its citizens and live out their dreams. It is a false dichotomy that keeping a community safe and our rights are mutually exclusive. And this bill has been supported by the localities mentioned and the Chiefs of Police Association. Next, House Bill 4033 would offer one-time grants for Newport News, Hampton, Norfolk, Ports, uh, excuse me, Petersburg, and Roanoke to fund community assessments aligned with the Youth Promise Act through the lens of prevention, intervention, enforcement, and reentry. This independent lens would help us discover what is working well and what are the voids and gaps as a community tries to provide for prevention measures in its own community. House Bill 4034 would establish a fund and grant program that would support, support survivors of gun violence who have been paralyzed or disabled to make adapt adaptations to their homes so that it would be more accessible. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, I think that there has been sufficient data showing that we have a gun violence issue in our Commonwealth. But House Joint Resolution 4005 would direct JLARC to study the particular effects of gun violence on the Commonwealth to help us do a better job of prevention. In order to move some of my colleagues on issues like food insecurity, school safety, workforce development, and health care, they needed to see a report. This resolution would direct a study to be conducted for the overall physical, emotional, mental, and community-level socioeconomic health of communities like mine who are ravaged by gun violence. Mr. Chairman, on all of my social media platforms, messages of some pretty angry Virginians have told me that people kill people, not guns. Well, we can't ignore that in some parts of Virginia, the majority of those being killed are done so with guns. But even if we decided to take that slant, let's study how to better prevent people from killing with guns. There's nothing in my DNA, Mr. Chairman, that makes me more violent or a thug, as some have suggested, any more than your DNA. There are factors playing a role in gun violence that need to be identified for us to do better at prevention. In summary, commissioners, please understand that not one more Virginian needs to lose their life to gun violence for us to acknowledge that we have a problem. I know that. I live that. The House Joint Resolution 4005 study would better guide prevention and intervention efforts as we try to change mindsets and cultural norms that could take generations. In the meantime, we must also keep our neighborhoods safe and House Bill 4005 and House Bill 4033 would help do that. And House Bill 4034 would help with the quality of life of the survivors who we didn't act soon enough to prevent the gun violence that impacted their life. Again, Mr. Chairman, I come before you with reasonable proposals that will help communities protect themselves against gun violence and help some of those who have already been impacted. And I offer no apologies for the emotions I have that I hope you are also having at hearing that children are being gunned down in parts of Virginia. And I hope that those emotions will move you to act. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate. You need not apologize for being emotional. We appreciate your enthusiasm. And uh, we're here because we agree. Absolutely. We have a gun violence uh, issue in Virginia that needs to be addressed. And we're here to try and come up with proposals and recommendations and policy options that will help do that. Absolutely. Thank you very much.